from the weak words, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That is my weak words for the past week, every day for this week. And um, I just want to lift out a specific principle that I believe very important for us. A lot of you guys, you've done the subject balance, lifestyle. And um, when you see Luke 2, verse 52, you can remember that one. It talks about Jesus that grew in stature, in wisdom, favor with God, favor with man. Those four facets. And my question would be, when you go and have time with God in the season, my brother, my sister, where it will be so necessary for the season laying ahead in the world, in our country, in our city, for your life, to get out to God, to get out to God. And then the question, how much of his voice will you filter through personality? And how far will you really allow him to speak the way that he wants to speak to you? And I, I want to challenge you to say, in all these four facets, if Jesus had to grow in all those four facets, so much more me and you in all those four facets we need to grow. Amen? Sometimes we use the thing of, that I'm all a practical person, or this is my personality, I'm more introvert, I'm more extrovert, all those type of stuff. And with that, we want to box in and expect God to speak to me in a certain way. He's God, and I'm not. And when he's God, he can speak to me in the way that he wants to. Amen. So, in the four facets, when we say Jesus grew in stature, wisdom, favor with God, favor with man, we see four different facets for our own lives. First one about stature. It's about him as the leader. You need to grow in stature. I can say, no, I'm no more... Uh, people person or I'm more practical serving I'm not necessarily a leader that is if the leader of the universe is not living in you but if the leader of the universe Jesus Christ is living in you that the one in here the, the, the authority that is in here for in front of that authority heaven and earth will bow through the name of Jesus Christ then the leader is in you hello so I need to grow in him, and he must be manifested in and through me. We use the word, as a lot of you guys know, breakthrough authority. Breakthrough authority. That means where I go, authority from heaven can, can go. Where I come in a situation, what you will give as strategy can be from heaven as heaven's final authority for that situation. If what? If he can be the leader through your life. For you to be raised up in leadership, the context for you to grow in the leadership that is from him is respect. Respect. At the end of the day, when you understand respect, your authority can be healthy. Your authority can be in Christ. You are a leader if you can respect the leader. If you can respect Jesus Christ as the leader, then you are a leader. Finished. Because from that place, you admire and you see him. He's the role model in how you see things. Hello? And I pray that you understand that when, like when David stood in front of Goliath, what happened? He was amazed that that Guy did not have respect for the armies, for the army of God. You come to me with this and this and this. Do you not understand? I come to you in the name of the Lord. But it's like, what does that mean? Come in the name of the Lord. But there's such a revelation of the name of the Lord. There's such a revelation of the authority of God in David. That he actually come with a question mark. How dare you come? How dare you? Challenge the authority of my God and his people. 
Where do you get the guts from? To challenge the authority of my God and his people. Are you with me? Because he saw the authority against the lion and the bear. He saw the authority of God. So if I want to be raised up in authority, I must allow God's authority over my life to deal with the rubbish. But otherwise, the authority of my hurt or the authority of my success, the authority of my reasoning, the authority of what I can do or what I took offense of or whatever it will be, that will be the final authority and not Jesus Christ. But if I want to be raised up in stature that will stand against what the enemy can bring, I must allow the voice of authority to speak to me. So when you have time with God in December here, further, when you go, I pray that you will have that time with the voice of the authority from heaven, the voice of authority, that you will allow him to speak to you. And that means that it's not if you understand what he's saying or not understand what he's saying. The voice of authority is where I, if he says that, I believe that, that settles it, that's it. If I understand, it doesn't matter. That's the first one of the four facets. So if I allow, it's not for me only to accept what he says when I understand it. I accept it because I respect his authority. When you respect authority, you just take it by faith because he said it. Not because you understand it. You take it by faith because you know who said it. And because you know who he is, you don't always understand what he does, but you know who he is. And because you respect that, therefore, you take that authority and in that way, my brother, my sister, you will have more authority in next year. But from a place of humility, why? Because you respect him. May that be true of your life, and then you will not fight people and stuff and things so, so easily. Not easily so get offended when I have respect for his authority. Finish. This Patrick... And I want to give him something, you know. Irritates me. Doing this, doing that, doing that, doing that. And I will flip, or I can get, can overreact, I can this, I can that. If what? If he has not the final authority in me. But if I respect his authority, even though I feel like slaughtering the man, I respect his authority. I will forgive. I will give grace. I will believe in him. I know God is the best for him. Hello? Why? Because I always want to. No. But because I've made my choice, I will respect his final authority. And that gives me stature above the situation. Stature above the circumstance. Stature above the success or the failure in my life. Your stature is found in grace in him. Amen? First stature you received was you became a child of God. Amazing stature. How sweet the sound. And the stature is found in grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. What an awesome honor and stature God gave me that I could become a child of God. What an awesome stature you've been given to be called the child of God. Now live then from a place of thankfulness, from the place of stature God has given you as a child. Amen? Can we take that? Second point, wisdom. He grew in wisdom. Wisdom is always practical. Wisdom is how to take a principle and make it practical. How to put it on the ground. How to take a principle and put it on the ground. Now, some people would say, I'm more practical, I'm not a people person, or I'm not necessarily a leader. Okay, that is if Christ is not living in you. I'm not saying there's not uniqueness. Yes, God's going to use us in a very unique ways. But, if you have been crucified with Christ, and you no longer live, but he lives in you, then 
I no longer live, but the leader of all leaders is living in me. Then the servant of all is living in and through me. Hello? Are you with me? Will you allow him to be who he is in and through your life? Then your life is not based on your personality. Your life, your relationship is not based on your personality. Now, if your personality has the final authority and you respect your personality more than Christ, that's okay. Uniqueness it will be because you will show forth God is not boring with all respect. So in his uniqueness, you will be unique as a person with a unique calling. But when personality, when I have the right with my personality to cut out what God would want to do even without realizing it. Who of us will say, God will not be allowed to do this in my life? No. But having more faith in my personality and the way that I operate than have faith in God's personality in the way that he operates. Your problem is with God. Now you must decide who will be in the box. You or him. If you respect him, you will not put him in the box. Hello? But you will do according to the word. So, we talked about this, these four facets and in the subject, if you haven't done that subject, balanced lifestyle is about eight hour subject where we talk about this principle once when God gave this to me and I was tuned about these principles. I had to repent about a lot and still trusting God for a lot to change. But still, those four facets. And I just realized the four living creatures before the throne of God. Talking about the fullness of perfection of what God created on earth. That the fullness of every facet of what he created will bow before him. And that is the one that looked in there with the face of the lion. One of the ox, one of the man, one of the eagle. And then Ezekiel also saw those four. And in those four facets, first one, the lion, always talking about authority. We're talking about Jesus grew in stature, the lion authority, the lion of Judah that will roar through you. Second one, ox, giving the picture of the servant the servant jesus grew in wisdom wisdom is about being practical that you will understand how to serve that as a servant knowing how to serve if i just want to hear that that facet with god i'm a practical person then what you want to hear from god it must always be practical otherwise you will be frustrated i got this day with when you will uh, Hear from God your day words for next year. And if it's not practically working out, then you feel frustrated. It doesn't work. You didn't hear God. You know? Maybe what God told you to do, let's say, um, I can't think of an example. Let's say that it's something small that's going to happen the evening. God now showing you now of what must happen on the 23rd of June next year. Hey, as you write your day words for every day in this holiday for next year. You get on to into 23rd of June. You don't have a cooking clue what will this day word mean what I, that I wrote last year, December. And, but in the day, you are open and you are Praying in tongues here and there just to make sure, God, wherever you're going to lead me with that day, with, I'm open. You're praying in tongues here and there and just so in between, becoming more and more lifestyle. And this evening, that day with was just something small, very small thing that had to happen. And you thought, yeah, it was a struggle. It was such a struggle to, to come into the place to know what God actually told me what to do. But you know, that day it was just a carrot in front of the donkey. God wanted you to pray in tongues that day. He wanted you to three, four, five, ten times just to be praying in tongues so that 
during the day you will make the right decisions. That was just the carrot in front of the donkey. But the carrot, it wasn't about the carrot. It wasn't about taking the donkey from there to there. That's God's agenda for you that day. That Mr. Donkey will move from there to there. He used that. But if I'm just practical, and I see myself just as practical, and I'm not so much into my relationship with him, my relationship with people, and how I move through the day, even though I could feel frustrated. Now I will have an intimate relationship with frustration, or I will give what I have to God while I'm communicating with him during the day. And I think it's just about finding the answer for that Word. No, it's not about finding the answer for the word. Position yourself before God in prayer, even through praying in tongues. So many times, my brother, because what are you doing? The scripture says when you pray in tongues, your spirit pray and your mind is unfruitful. Hey? So you're telling your mind to, what's the Christian word for shut up? Play still. Is that the Christian word? Okay. <laughs> so you, from your spirit, you're telling your mind to be still. And that was the agenda of God for that day. But if you just think in a practical way, you will be going through the day intimately affiliated with frustration. Instead of going through the day, bringing it constantly before the Lord by making your spirit stronger and telling your mind to shush, to be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And because you are in that place, that day especially... You could have made some bad choices with your soul. But because you were in prayer a lot, with a day that you couldn't understand, you made right decisions during the day. Are you with me? There's such a lot of dynamics of what could happen and how God is putting things together in our lives that we will take the next thousand years to figure out what he actually did. That we will in heaven stand amazed of in what he has done in our lives. Amen? Through his grace, in spite of our mistakes, he's there. He's there for us. But my brother, my sister, let's put it before him. Amen? First of all, I will hear his authority. To be raised up in stature, and I will hear the authority from the place of respecting his authority, not fearing. The enemy also recognizes his authority, but he runs filled with fear that run away from that authority. The devil will flee. But you will be drawn to his authority. His authority over your life will be beautiful. And that beauty, you will respond with respect. Respect that stand in awe. That can brag about his authority. You with me? But secondly, yes, practically. God is a practical God, and he will speak to you in this season about some practical stuff of what needs to happen for next year and the season laying ahead in your life. God wants you practically to know a lot. But when you are just focusing on the practical, God in his jealous love will speak to you in a way that a lot will not be practical. (laughs) Just sometimes. Because he's jealous for your love. That you will not have all the practical answers. And there you go. But you go without him. With your skill. That excellent. That you can be practical. Man, you can do the thing. You can have all the success. But without him. He never called you to do something without him. He always called you to do it with him. For him also. Yes, because you do it as if unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. But, so when we feel frustrated, please, my brother, go and sit with God. Take that time. Go beyond the point of frustration and allow him to speak to you. I plead, I beg you, take that time with God. Be a wise virgin. Be a wise builder. Take time with foundation. 
lay the foundation with God for next year. Lay the foundation with God. And laying foundations takes time. It's not something visible that you just see, wow, there's the building. Taking the extra oil when it's not necessary. The wise know how to use the time with things that are not necessary at that moment. You are not occupied with what is necessary now. And that is wisdom. You're occupied because of wisdom. You are occupied with wisdom and you are occupied with stuff because the wisdom of God led you to be occupied with that. So God's wisdom will lead you to be with him, to hear from him things that you don't even think is necessary to know or to hear. Then you're a wise man. Then you're a wise virgin. May God's wisdom arrest you for that in December, in, in this season, when you go and sit and get the extra oil. Sit and go and lay the foundations for what is ahead in your life. You don't know how the building will look. So therefore, if we don't know how the building will look, then we can be, be, begin to be very frustrated to lay a foundation for this wooden house, this Wendy house. But meanwhile, it's a 10-story building. And it will be such a fight and such a hell of a lot of frustration in your life. Because you think of the Wendy house and now this foundations that... But the process for the Wendy house on the, on the, on the ground and the 10-story building is totally two different stuff, two different things. Hello? But will you have the faith to believe that God knows what he is doing? That you will be open to go and sit with him in a practical way. And some of the practical things that he will show you of how to lay the foundations. Practically, it will not make any sense because maybe we have the picture, the vision of the Wendy house. But that is not what God has in mind. And you don't know what he has in mind. He's not going to explain himself to you as if you need to okay his strategy. Hello? He's pleased. He's pleased when you must walk by faith. That means he's pleased when you don't understand and still obey. <laughs> Are you with me? A lot of stuff where people are misled, even with conspiracy theories and whatever we want to go with out there. If it's to the left, if it's to the right, people want to understand. People feel safe when they understand. So to go by faith and just to understand God is in control, um, that's sometimes difficult. Just to say God's in control, but I sit back and I do nothing. No, that's not, that's not godly. That's not bringing honor to him. Faith without works is dead. You know, no, I give it over to the Lord by faith, and therefore you do nothing. No, that's, that's not according to the word. What you're going to do when you give it over to God, he will show you. And in December, in this month, in this time when you will go and sit with him, it's to go and say, God, I surrender everything to you. What is your agenda? What is your plan? What do you expect of me? What do you want from me next year? Please, guys, can we do that? Wise virgin, wise builder. I bless you to be wise and that God's wisdom, that you will grow in wisdom. First one, grow in stature in Christ. Second one, grow in wisdom. That's even from the book Mark. He was a servant of all, but let's not go there now. Okay, third one, favor with man and favor with God. Favor with man, you can write there. Relational capacity. First one was you have breakthrough authority. Where you come into a place, there can be breakthroughs. In what you believe, in what you do, there can be breakthroughs for people. Breakthroughs over your flesh. Breakthroughs over the rubbish that kept you there. The bad self-image. The rejection. The this. That normally you would react like this. This is part of, you made it your, part of your personality. 
But a lot of what you experience in your personality is because of certain stuff that you allowed as weaknesses. Let's say temper. You know, in the, in the willy fears. That's just part of the willy fears, you know, of these, these guys, this family. They get easily irritated. And the temper. But you put that as part of the personality. Part of your personality. That's not from God. You honor the personality or you honor God. And you allow God to challenge that. Now, we say favor with man. So we have breakthrough authority, practical effectivity, that you will be practically effective. You will be successful in what you do. Someone, everything that that man does, prosper. What that man does, he prospers. Because he walk in the counsel of counselor, Holy Spirit. Who stand in the way, Jesus Christ. Sit in the seat with Christ in heavenly places. Meditates on his law day and night. Day and night. You get it in your mind, in your heart. The word. And that man, everything he does, prospers. That type of man. Be that type of man. Go. Get the counsel from the Holy Spirit. Make sure you are standing in the way, in the strategy called Jesus Christ. Make sure you are coming from that place, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Not sitting with your personality. Not sitting with your temper. Not sitting first with your weakness. Not sitting with your hurt, your, your offenses, or your this. Not sitting in the seat of your successes. No. Sitting with Christ in heavenly places. Know who you are in Him. And with him. Amen. So then number three. Relational capacity. He grew in favor with man. What does it mean? You have this capacity with people. No, I'm not a people person. And uh, whoever told you that, I don't know. But the one living in you. is very, 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 very much driven. To be involved with people. He's called Jesus Christ. He's driven by love. He's driven by himself. And if you are driven by God, you'll be involved with people. Then you will become healthy in your relating with people. Even though you got hurt, if you allow God to heal you in here, you will get involved with people. Even though there will be fear to be be disappointed or to get hurt again. But now I choose. God, you will guide me, or the demon of fear will guide me. So either God or the devil will guide me. The demon, that spirit of of fear, or God of love. But perfect love drives out all fear. So don't fight the fear, embrace the love. The love will fight the fear. The perfect love will drive out the fear. You cannot, you have no authority over that fear. But God overcame. He is the one. So that perfect love took out all the fear. The light of the world. He dealt with darkness. You cannot fight darkness. But embrace the light and darkness will flee. Are you with me? Battle belongs to the Lord according to the scripture. Are you with me? So please my brother, please my sister, go and sit with him. Go and sit with the lightness and the darkness must go. Go and sit in the light. Have intimate relationship with the light and the darkness must flee. You don't have to have an intimate fight with darkness. You don't have to have it. You put on the light, you don't see a fight with darkness. Between light and darkness here. Are you with me? But you better find out how to put on the light. In this place. This is your, your life. And it's, it's dark. It's 11 o'clock at night. If you can only know. How to put on the light. It's there. It's in your life. But you still need to. For every facet of your life. You still have the authority. You still need to. Put on the light. Ask Holy Spirit. Where must I put on the light? Or you can struggle in next year 
in darkness, even though you're a child of God. But the darkness can frustrate you. And you have relationships and things in your life, but it can be so much easier. And then the yoke is not easy. Burden is not light because we don't experience that light. If there's a lot of stuff that must happen here, you know, in the light, in the day, it's very easy to take that chair and that chair and that chair and that chair and put it there in the corner behind. Now, I'm not walking with the light of God that is shining through me. And I get the same mandate as that man. But I must do this in the dark. And I hear him. He must take that one and that one and that one and that one and put it there in the corner. But it's pitch dark. What a frustration I will have to live out that calling. With a yoke that is not easy and a burden that is not light. To fulfill God's call on my life. To take that chair, that chair, that chair, that chair and put it in the corner. But if the light was on. Wow. What amazing breakthrough. No. It's just a very logical response. Not true? Are you with me? So may God help you to put on the light. So that. So many stuff. It was not necessarily always easy in our lives this year. Those areas in my life where God, I need to know where to put on the light. Tomorrow, next year, it cannot be such a struggle. To find the right five chairs where you pointed to. Like this. If I saw that in the light, I would have taken the right five. But now I have the right three and bring back that. And then I don't find the other two. And I'm as fast to try and figure out where to be led to find the right three chairs, you know, like, that's like Blundermol, Stuariki. It's such a game. Okay. So what are we saying? And I can have one hell of a struggle for three months to have the right five chairs in a corner. And the other guy can take ten minutes because he saw the master pointing at what chairs. And he took the chairs and put it in the corner. It was just simple. But we can now keep ourselves busy next year with a lot of stuff. And then we can testify at the end of the year that we got the right five chairs and we placed them in the corner. But you know, God had so much more for us than taking 12 months to what the enemy brought against me and, and how I stood against the enemy and, and overcame and I got the right five chairs in the corner. That was God's agenda for the first day. And then he wanted to do a lot of other stuff. He still loves me. Doesn't condemn me. Still believe in me. Still believe in the dream that he has for my life. Praise God for the blood. Amen. But may God help us. And now, in your relational capacity, when you are driven by love, it's because of Him. Amen. Now I say, oh, it's me, it's me and God. And there's love between me and God. People, they can do this, they can do that, they can do that. But you know, one side of the coin, God, other side of the coin, people. You say you love God, but you hate people. You have an issue with people. You're a liar. There's no love in you. It's fake. But if I don't want to embrace the fake life, the fake love, if it must be genuine, and I say, God, teach me how to love you. Be careful. Maybe don't pray that this year. <clears throat> because maybe he will take you serious. And if he takes you serious, and you're saying, God, teach me how to love you. He could put people in your life that is not so lovable. So that you learn how to love them. So if I must learn how to love David, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. You know? Then what? In the process, I'm praying, God, teach me how to love him. And in the process, I'm learning how God is loving me. In spite of all my whatever. So how much easier is it supposed to be to love him? If I see God's grace and God's heart in how he's loving me, then I will be understanding how to love him. 
I can only love him with the love that God loves me with. True? So in the process of learning how to love him, I'm training it. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching it. Myself, if I can say like that, through our relationship. So God will send people in my life so that I can learn how to love him. Him. And that the depth and the quality of my love for God will be really having eternal value. Because who will say here, I don't love God, I hate him. Unless there's something really intensely demonic that happened with your life. But when we say we love him, what does that mean at all? But if, if there must be some depth in that, and that that love is a driving force from there, from heaven, how much better if we are driven by the energy from heaven, from the power that is from above, from the motivation that is from there. Now that is 2 Corinthians 5 that says we must be driven by love. So if we are driven by his passion, driven by that is from what is from above, it will not destroy me. But when I'm driven by bitterness, driven by an issue, driven by my a temper, when I'm driven by performance, when I'm driven by fear, so that there will be enough of something. That can destroy you. That can drain you. That can take your energy away. Your vision away. So may God purify our hearts. That that what will drive us will be from His love. And that we will have this relational capacity. The third one, eh? A relational capacity with men, but lastly also with God. Relational capacity. The third one. Before the throne of God, it was the face of the lion, about authority, amen, and stature. Second one was about the ox, that's about practical effectivity, how to serve, not as a curse, but as an honor unto the Lord. Third one was the face of a man, that is relational capacity, hello, favor with man. And last one, favor with God, the face of an eagle, face of an eagle. The eagle, if he understands how to be an eagle, he will understand the wind. If you understand how to be a son of God, a child of God, you will understand your capacity. You will understand the wind. You will understand how to move with the Spirit. Because you will move as a child of God with the Spirit of God. But you need to know who you are as a child of God. You need to know who you are as the bride of Christ. So that the, the spirit and the bride says, come Lord Jesus. But in that scripture of Revelation, it's the spirit and the bride says, come. And that first come is first also to the nations. That tomorrow, next year, you and the spirit of God, you will invite Bloemfontein. Invite your friends, your family, your enemies. Invite them to Christ. And then invite Christ to come. God, be welcome. Because you know who you are as the bride of Christ, then you'll know how to speak the same language as the Spirit of God. And you and the Spirit says, come. People, you are welcome. And you and the Spirit says, come. Lord Jesus, you are welcome. Find out who you are. Find out who you are in Christ. Not find out who you are as a product of your flesh or your head or your, your relationships that, that you experience in your life. No, I need to find out who I am in Christ. Amen. Then I will understand the last one. Spiritual accuracy. That I can be accurate in the spirit. That I can be accurate... But I understand God said, that chair, that chair, that chair, that chair, that chair, in the corner. Pew. I do that. Burden is light. Yoke is easy. So much better. We're going through frustrations many times because God is putting it there because he wants to show me you are not in my will. 
So manifestations is to birth forth that what is from him. Is it not Romans 8 talking about creation is subjected to frustration for the manifestation of the sons of God? Creation is calling out. Creation is groaning like in birth pangs. Yeah? That frustration is with an expectation. Let's say frustration with an expectation. There's a frustration that is ready for a lot of stuff to be destroyed in your life. For a lot of rubbish decisions to be made. For a lot of deception to happen. But there's a frustration that is birthed when you bring that frustration before God in prayer. So that something, what will be birthed, will be from God. When everything is given over to God in prayer. Are you with me? So we see that last one, the eagle. So you know the eagle, understand the wind. He uses the storm. He doesn't fight the storm. He uses the storm for his benefit to rise up even higher. To rise up even higher. He, he can see with his eye that snake. Not to go and fight the snake, but to eat the snake. <clears throat> Hello. Joshua, Caleb, two of the 12 spies, they came back and said the giants are our food. They were not cannibals. They meant what we're going to learn from this situation. We're just going to grow. We're going to go stronger. When we need to face giants, when you need to face challenges, there's only one result. You're going to grow. It's obvious to Joshua and Caleb. It's obvious. There's challenges, there's giants, but we're going to grow through them. We're going to grow through facing those giants. Because we know what God has given us. We know the promises of God. We know the God that promised us that. And because we don't just know the promises. You are sit with promises, but you must know who is the one who gave you those promises. It's not, first of all, do you believe the promises? It's do you believe the one who gave you the promises? Hello? Because you, then you will know. Who's the one throwing all that intimidation against you? And you will know that, that that giant cannot be compared to the God who spoke to me already. Know your source. Know the one who's speaking to you. And so you will become spiritually accurate even for next year. So allow God to speak to you about your spiritual accuracy with him and with people. Allow God to speak to you about your relational capacity. Allow God to speak to you about being practically effective even more. Allow God to speak to you about your breakthrough authority. All those four facets seen through the four faces before the throne of God. Allow God to speak to you about all those facets. And don't try and box his voice in your personality. God, come and set us free, please. Lord, we need you. We need your guidance. Thank you, Father, that through the blood of Christ, the past is gone and the future is excellent. We can stand only by grace. We can boast only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your grace on our lives. Thank you that we can have an expectation of that, what you're going to do in and through us, Lord. God, I pray. For everyone here that you will bless each one of us, Lord, with an intimate, special, special, unique time with you, Lord, in this season. So that we can see, Lord, more of you. And from that place, go into next year with an expectation, knowing that the best is yet to come. God, as you shake heaven and earth, help us, Lord, that we'll see that we will see what need to be shaken out of our lives and what need to be laid as foundations for the future. Help us to work with you, Lord, and with your voice. We choose to honor your authority, your voice, that will draw us in, into that place of standing amazed at your heart and at who you are. I pray for such a hunger through the Holy Spirit in each one of us a hunger for your word, a hunger for your presence, Lord. Come and do that in our lives, Lord. We need you. We need you to do that. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And all say, 
Amen, Amen.